Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time I'm going to be taking my final look through my Gels cartoon collection. Now, this video, it will be the like the reprints and the facsimiles and the, the compilations and some of the non-fiction books that were produced around Gels during his career. We'll also take a little look at my merchandise. So I've got some calendars and I've got some jigsaws to look at as well as some other interesting bits and pieces. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Okay then, so we'll open with the first of sort of the Giles specials, as it were, and this one is uh, called Nurse, and this was dedicated to all the uh, nurses and NHS staff. Um, between 1970 and 1975, the Express newspapers had sponsored the Nurse of the Year competition, so because of that, um, uh, they sort of dedicated this compilation of Giles's nurse cartoons and hospital cartoons to uh, to them and put them out in this uh, one-off special. I believe this is getting quite scarce to find nowadays, but uh, I'm certainly very pleased with it. Now, because we've got so many to get through, I'm not sure how we'll be able to keep them all in the picture. So next, as they come really, is the, uh, the two desk diaries. So they did one for 94 and 95. I believe there is a smaller sort of pocket diary for 94 as well. So I've got this one twice. This is just the standard version that I've had for years. And they basically have a cartoon on one side with the week to view on the other side. And then this one I picked up this summer actually, and it's got a cartoon by um, the cartoonist Joel Pett, who I believe is that guy there. Um, and he's an American political cartoonist. Um, and this was just like a few pounds in the charity shop. So I thought, oh, I'll grab that. And when I came home and looked him up, yeah, Joel Pett is his name. So pretty cool that. Obviously a cartoonist and I'm guessing he must have been a fan of Giles. And here's the, uh, the desk diary for 1995. So cool stuff. Now, one thing that they have been doing for quite a few years now, is republishing the earlier Giles books in facsimile form. So here's the uh, the first one here, and this is the facsimile of the very first annual. And they come in these sort of slip cases here, so you just slide them out like that. Now, these early facsimiles used to be quite expensive to get, but I think they're much cheaper now as they've started to appear on the second-hand market. Um, I was able to pick all my facsimiles up, and I haven't quite got them all, but I've got most most of the earlier ones um, for just a few pounds each, including number one. I would buy little job lots. So I've ended up with a few doubles, but I can always sell those on or pass them on to friends and that. Um, this is the facsimile for 1947. So that's the, the second annual. And it's definitely a way to read it without damaging your originals. That's for certain. Here's the uh, third one. Um, these early facsimiles are a little bit delicate because of their sort of cardboard sleeves. So you do need to be careful not to uh, not to damage them when you get the books in and out. But it's still preferable than reading the original editions, which are very, very delicate, of course. Um, so come the fourth one, they actually got a bit more robust and they put them in these a bit more hard wearing slip cases. There's the fourth book. And of course they've got um, the numbers on the bottom there, on the spine rather, for these early books as they were originally. Um, here's number five, The Garden Fate, on oh, the baby show, wasn't it? Yeah. Was book five. Um, just seeing if I've got some more of these I have down here. It doesn't look like I've got number six. That's one I'm missing. As I said, I just pick them up when I see them cheap. Here's number seven for 1952. <laughs> Great covers, aren't they? Here's number eight for many years. This was the earliest one I had um, until I got lucky and found a little batch of the early ones, originals that is, um, quite cheaply. That's number eight, not the greatest condition facsimile. 
and number nine. I mean, I, I wonder why they even bother doing facsimiles of these later ones because these are not exactly scarce to find second hand. I mean, there's loads of copies around. You shouldn't pay more than a pound or two for any of these later ones now. But I suppose there's collectors out there and uh, there may be some people who don't want second hand copies. Um, so what else have we got? What's this one here? This was really nice. Giles, 50 years at work. Um, look at that cover there. It's, it's him actually drawing the cover to the first annual. Look at that. And he looks like he's in a bomber jacket. So very early on. Uh, Mid-1940s. Great stuff. It was uh, an exhibition of Giles's stuff. Brilliant. Early laugh with booklets and what have you. So yeah, very nice little little book that one. Um, then we got another. There's a few more reprint albums here. So these are more modern, hardback. This is Fighting Forces. This is uh, edited by John Field. This one, um, 2008. This compilation. And it's different different forces put together into a little compilation and very good to see that they're also put into um, historical context. You can actually see what's going on and what the cartoon relates to. Uh, John Field, of course, is the chap who's been editing the annuals more recently and uh, he's done a very good job of um, placing the cartoons historically in the in historical context. Here's another one. Uh, same editor, looking at Giles's London. Hardback again. 2007, so this was the year before. Same sort of thing. London specific. Cool stuff. This one here is Giles's. VE Day collection. The child, this collector is limited and specially commissioned to commemorate the final years of war and celebrate the beginning of peace. Each child's cartoon has been paired with the front page of the Daily Express newspaper in which it first appeared to create a unique insight to the years 1943 to 1945. Well, that's something a bit different, isn't it? So there we are. So cartoon on one side, original front page of the Daily Express on the others. But it couldn't get more in historical context, could it? These were the very cartoons that were printed in these original Daily Express newspapers. Of course, they're from that period, so they're not quite as detailed as some of Giles's later work. Good idea, that. I don't think they ever did it again on any of the other books, but even so, um, nice to see that one. So here is that one. It's not actually in a cardboard case, but it was for the Golden Jubilee special edition. It looks like the, uh, very similar to the facsimiles, but in actual fact, it's just a slip cased annual. Very, very lavish. I love the gold logo. Very, very nice. So Carl was awarded the OBE in 1959. I wonder if the Queen minded uh, being portrayed in so many cartoons. <laughs> it's another unusual one to keep your eyes peeled for. Next, we've got a run of books by Peter Torrey. Now, Peter Torrey was a real Giles historian, and he was the leading sort of authority on Giles. And uh, I think, I think this was the very first one that he did. I can't really remember because I did buy them all when they came out. So I'm not sure if this is the first one he did or not. But as you can see, they're quite thick hardbacks. 
very common picture used on a lot of the books here and uh, this one's a life in cartoons this is more of a biography of Giles's life and I believe this was a bit of a bestseller so that's dated 92 that one and um, it did also get released um, in paperback there was a paperback adaption of it which is a little bit later same content just uh, the uh, paperback version that was uh this is 92 stroke 93 so that was probably the year after so that one came out in a couple of formats then you've got giles at war here it's another one these are all by peter tory these next ones uh, once again sort of a military focus so little giles birthday card i think that my uh parents got me yeah oh my sister actually <laughs> Knowing my love of Giles. And what's this here? Giles of 50 Years Celebration at the Museum of Cartoon Art, 1993. I can't remember going to that, <laughs> to be honest. Maybe I did. Although I think I would have remembered it, but just a little bit of Giles ephemera. I've got a few bits and pieces like this dotted around in some of these hardbacks. Um, and it's all of interest, isn't it, to the Giles collector. So the Giles at war. Um, and so these are just as they come. So the history of the world, according to Giles. This is by John Field. So he's sort of the current editor of the Giles books. This is something a bit bigger than a normal annual. Looking at different aspects of history and how Giles did his take on it. Good stuff. Big thick hardback. Next one is the Giles family. Peter Tory again. Now this one's got a few bits and pieces in, so we'll take a look at that in a minute. Let's look at the book first of all. I remember poring over these books when they first got published and learning about Giles and his history. Really, really well produced cartoons, really nicely uh, crisp printing. 93, this one, stated. And um, as I recall, that clipping there is of Giles, Giles's obituary from the express of course august the 29th 1995 there we are got a double page spread in the the paper that he'd been supplying cartoons for for over 50 years and they didn't do a bad job and peter tory actually wrote the uh wrote the uh Actual obituary. Right, different author this time. We've got a look at Grandma. Uh, biography of Giles' infamous cartoon character by Rod Robert Beaumont. Another one from Headland, Headline. All grandma specific. Probably the most uh, famous of all the Giles characters. 1999 this one was published maybe peter tory had run out of ideas at this point i don't know now we got i think this is the last one by peter tory so this is the ultimate giles 300 of giles's favorite cartoons big heavy book this one once again by headline 25 pounds when it first got published um and it was published in 95. Cool, yeah. Over 300 pages. Very detailed. Colourful, clear. Brilliant stuff.
very heavy book, that one. And once again, the following year, um, it did get a paperback reprint, as we can see. Oh, if only the annuals were like this every year. God, how fantastic would that be? Right. So that's it on the books. Um, there are others. There's a couple others I haven't got. One of them I had was called Giles's War, and um, I sent it back because it was a, a really poor copy. Um, this is quite good. This is a little foam card. Remember, you go to a foam foam box and stick a card in. Twenty units. So I don't know how much that was. What twenty p maybe? But it's got a little Giles cartoon on there. Ah. Two pounds, so not 20p, 20 points was a two pound phone card. Look at that, and you go into your, your phone box, put that in and you have two pounds worth of chatting. Um, these are in my annuals. I did show these um, on an early one, but these are my original period Giles cartoons that I've turned up um, sometimes in collections. I told you I bought collections to finish my set. And uh, a couple of people had actually just trimmed Giles cartoons originals from the newspaper and I found that quite interesting because the different sizes and how the cartoons would have to be um, shrunk down to fit the format of the annual. So the last things I've got to look at are my jigsaw puzzles and the calendars. So I've got these jigsaws first and these are I, I guess it's called the green series. They're dated 1996 and they've got some of the classic front covers. And these are 300 pieces. I remember having these as a, as a kid and absolutely uh, loving them. Um, I got, got bought a couple for my collection. And really, really cool. So I believe I've got all the jigsaws now. Um, this is the, uh, the fruit center, the one missing. <laughs> Good stuff. And uh, these used to be so, so common um, around the boot sales and the charity shops, but not anymore. I guess they're just so old. And there's another one of that one. All there, 40p. <laughs> so that was the green series. And then a little bit later, so they were 76. What date do these, well, when do these date from? Well, these also say 76, but it's a, it is a different series. It's the Puzzler. And these are less pieces, 260 pieces on these. But the same sort of thing, you know, taking one of the, um, uh, the lovely colour covers there and putting it into jigsaw form. Fruit shop again. I guess 260 pieces. They're a little bit easier to complete. This one's nice. This is um, sealed, this one. Still sealed, a bit dusty, but can't be many sealed ones. Are these still around? So that's quite nice. Forget where I got that one, but yeah, needs a bit of a clean. <laughs> and then for some reason, I've got another one of the fruits, I guess, because it's that good. Um, <laughs> brilliant stuff. And I've just got to get out my calendars. So this calendar I got in uh, 1999, this one's dated. I seem to think I had a, I had some 80s calendars, but when I come to look for them, maybe I was mistaken. Let's just get the camera right in there so we can see these properly. Yeah. But quite nice to have a Giles um, calendar. I used to have a Giles tea towel as well. Don't know what happened to that one, sadly. Um, so some of these calendars, this is the 2000 one. Some of these calendars, I believe, got packaged with the annual of that time. Um, but to be honest, I wasn't buying the annuals at that point. So I can't really remember. Um, but these are just ones, once again, that I've turned up in collections that I've bought. This is 2002 calendar. 
And they're really nice and colourful and you've got your classic Giles cartoon. Two thousand and three. These are just the covers of the uh, annuals, aren't they? Two thousand and four. And that lovely painted one for two thousand and five. Oh, brilliant stuff. So yeah, that's all my sort of Giles bits and pieces and spin-offs beyond the albums, really, all the annuals. Um, obviously, one of the main highlights were the uh, the China figures that were produced, and there has been quite a lot of other memorabilia over the years. Um, certainly the tea town, there was like a, a, a tray and all sorts of things, and the highlight of any collection, I guess, has to be a piece of original Giles art, but sadly, um, a little bit out of my league now, um, and they just don't come on the market very often. But there we are. That concludes my, is it five videos of Giles? Four or five videos of Giles books um, and memorabilia. I do hope you've enjoyed looking through the collection as much as I enjoy collecting it. If you have, do please hit that thumbs up and do please subscribe if you've not already for regular vintage content. And I'll look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.